It's a truck, it's a car, it's a 2006 Chevrolet SSR. Ha! <laughs> Made that up myself. Um, and that's what it is. It's the 06 Chevrolet SSR. The guy brought it in. It's got like no miles on it because they park them in their garage apparently. Uh, and he took it out to drive it because it's nice and uh, the wipers are being mysterious. By that I mean they just turn it on on their own, drive down the road and you know, you shut the switches off obviously but they'll go from delay and then they might just go to low and then they'll shut off and they always park but then they just random they just won't shut off so anyhow he yanked the fuse out of it he drove it here and uh, asked me what is wrong with it um so i suspected when i got in it because you fiddle with the switch and then you get them to turn off you know you turn it on and off on and off on and off you know figured maybe it had you know years of armor all uh perhaps got down in there but then uh that is not the case um I decided the only thing we can do is test it at that point. So we have a choice at this point. We can tear apart the cowl and get to the wiper motor to check it, or we can tear apart the uh, steering column covers. And I just decided, made an executive decision uh, as a shop owner to pull the cowl because that's easier. Uh, the wiper motor on this thing is like buried way down there and the connector is impossible to get to, so you have to pull the wiper motor out. So I did that. And uh, so the multifunction switch just sends different resistance values to the wiper motor. The wiper motor has logic in it. We'll look at a diagram, I'll show you. And I decided, well, sometimes it's easier to just look through service data because they'll just give you the values right there, you know, on delay one, delay two, up through five, and high and low, which wires you check and what the resistance value is supposed to be of the wiper switch. But in this case, I found that service data was wrong. If you were following service data, you would end up replacing the wiper switch. Uh, which would just end you with the same exact problem that you already have. So we're not gonna go through all that, but I am gonna go through and just show you. We're gonna look at a diagram, show you how we read it, and how we determine which wires to test, and how to make the dis executive decision as shop owner, if you wanna do that, that the wiper motor itself is bad. And the good news about that is, it is discontinued from Chevrolet. They don't make them aftermarket, so you're kinda, of, you're up that crick, but you don't have a paddle. So why am I paddling? You're up the crick like this. Hey, I got no paddle. The good news is, I called our good friends at Cardone Industries and begged with them and pleaded and said, please, can you do something? And they were very kind and generous and said, we're gonna find a core, we're gonna get it fixed, we're gonna ship it out to you. And I said, whoa, pull back the ponies here, boys. Let's see if that's what's wrong with it first. And that's where we're at. So I'm just trying to determine, you know, motor, switch, what's the deal, if it is, ringy a ding a ding and call Cardone. They'll send us the one that they have ready to rock and roll. Move some stuff out of the way. Bear with me, folks. We are not professional photographers here. Photographers. This is the OEM diagram for this wiper system. And I was looking down here, and some things were confusing me with the off mist switch. And uh, I was getting confused on a couple things here. So I said, you know, hey, you're not a professional even though you can make executive decisions, let's go with something simple. We like colors. So we're gonna go with the color diagram because I think it is laid out a little bit better, a little more simplistic. So we're gonna unenhance. Hopefully this is gonna show up for you. If I was fancy, we could do some kind of screen recording and pointing and stuff, but we're not gonna. Check out this sweet pen a guy made for me though. Is that sweet or what? That's sweet. Anyhow, what we wanna determine is, is the motor bad? So. We're gonna look, here's the wiper switch, here's the wiper motor. It has logic because it says right here, it's logical. And we need to determine how this is gonna work. How do we know it's gonna be bad? How do we know, I guess, we have two options. We have three options. We got bad wires, corrosion, bad switch, on and on. But like I say, this thing's pretty clean. So we kind of have two options. We either have a motor that's wonky or we have a switch that's wonky. Um, so what we wanna look at is how can we tell if the switch is functioning. So let me come around here so I can see what I'm doing. Hopefully it's showing up because I can't see what you're seeing. Um, so what we need to do is you can see we have all these resistors inside this switch and essentially a single wire coming out that says windshield wiper switch signal and that goes to the wiper motor. Um, it appears that we have to kind of follow this around. You know, we want to know is this resistance to ground or is it set up? sent a power feed and in this case we got the windshield washer switch signal okay so I believe 
I would have to double check this, but this, I believe this either sends out a ground or, or a power feed. Uh, probably 12 volts would be my guess. We could, we could test that. Uh, it's kind of neither here nor there because we're not doing any live circuit testing. But we can see the wire goes down, comes through here, goes around, comes up, and then it starts going through these resistors for each individual setting. It looks like we have off, and then one, two, three, four, let me see, I suck, one, two, three, four, five uh, delay settings, a low setting, and then a high setting. And we can see as it comes up, these resistance values can only essentially go up in resistance value. Um, it appears that we come in through the pink, we go in through a resistor up and through one of the contacts and then out this gray wire. So these are our main players here. We have the gray wire and the pink wire. We're gonna go on them with our uh, DVOM and we're gonna check resistance right at the connector, like what's it, pin E and pin C uh, at the wiper motor. And as we change this switch, we should see that each of these values change. And more importantly, we should see them stay nice and steady. Um, don't really care what the values are at this point, um, but we do want to see them stay nice and steady because of the way this wiper system was acting, it would be off and then on and then off. So we want to make sure when we're in the off position, which technically should be just open circuit, you know, nothing coming up the gray wire according to this diagram, we want to make sure off is off, it's just infinite. Okay, and then it appears that when we go on high, uh, that's a totally different circuit because you can see here there's no wire coming off from high. So we come over here, high goes to ground, and then it goes straight to uh, the windshield wiper switch signal one. Okay, so that's going to be just straight, you know, when we put in high, dark blue wire, straight to ground, zero ohms, or close to it, you know, one ohm, whatever. Um, and also I see something unique here in the wash circuit. So we come in on the pink, we go around, we go to wash, and our gray wire, so our pink to gray at wash, I don't see any resistors, should go right to ground, you know, zero ohms in that case. And then also for mist, when we hit old misty here, we come down, uh, let's see, we go in, we go up, we go through one resistor right here, up to mist and out. And then with low, low comes out and down and around where are we? Out, down. Where's low go? How does low, how does low make it back to the gray wire? It's a great question, Eric. You don't even know the answer to it. You're ding dong. Low. Low, low, low your boat. Out, around, through this resistor. So therefore, low and mist should be of the same value because it, it utilizes the same resistor. So low and mist should be the same value. Wash should be at zero ohms. High should be at zero ohms, but on a different circuit. And then we should have different values for each one of these resistors. Now, here's where the OE diagram is good. If this is accurate, this shows one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's just see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six resistors. And it shows them the values at 380. I can't read that, maybe 620, 820, 1200, 2800, 4300. Um, I don't know what their tolerance is, you know, maybe plus or minus 10%. So we're gonna take this kind of with a grain of salt, but it appears low and missed should be the 380 ohms. And then you add, if that's six, so that's what, 900, 1000. So then the next speed should be 1000 and then 1820 and then whatever that is, plus 1200. We'll do some tricky math and see if we can figure this out. So. Uh, so this is nice. Let's see what our values are. I'm gonna write them down, we'll figure out the math. It's not overly complicated, I'm just not overly smart. And I'm really hoping at this point, whatever I was pointing at was recording. Uh, most people don't like seeing stuff like this, but you know, you can wing parts at it, but you can't even wing a part of this thing because they don't even make the part. I checked the napper, it was a remove and rebuild service only. So that's why we decided to get a hold of uh, Cardone because I believe that's where they send it. But just trying to shortcut this process a little bit for this fella. Um, we're gonna go to digital meter. We're gonna go to ohmage and we're gonna leave it on. It's auto ranging scale so we're not flicking and flapping. That way if something 
some kind of funny business happens, we'll catch it. So our leads are 0.23 ohms. We looked at our diagram. Like I say, we're gonna to go to the power feed into that uh, switch. So that's gonna be the pink wire. So pin C and pin E, so pink and gray. And we got us a couple leads up on here. So we're gonna go pink and gray. Yeah, right up on the top. There's old gray, the old Earl. Earl Gray. So there's that. Right now our switch is in the off position. Let's see. Enhance. Enhance. And you can see we have infinite resistance. So in theory, our wiper motor shouldn't be doing anything, but you're gonna have to believe me. Um, I would have showed you, but the customer is still here. Um, it just ran, just key on this thing and just had a mind of its own. Wasn't even thinking. So that tells me our switch is off, is really off. Uh, so now we're gonna go to the next level. Take it to the next level. <laughs> and that's gonna be delay, which, delay one, which should be two resistors. Uh, if this is, is correct, 380 plus 620. 380 plus 620. Who could do math? That's 1,000 equals 1K. So I'm thinking, 1k ohms. Let me flick it up one level. Where are we? There we go. So there's level one. Look at that. 1.02k. So that's 1,000 ohms. That makes me feel pretty smart. So I'm going to write this down. So we're at 1,000 ohms. And if we look on our chart here, the next resistance value is 820. So we should be 1.820. Uh, so 1.8 ohms or 1.8 2k ohms so we're going to a level 2 what are we Ooh, we're pretty good we've got some tolerance there so our next level is 1.85 and then we look on our chart here and our next speed should add 1200 to that so 1.85 plus 1200 is uh, what 3,000 ish so we're gonna be 3,000 ish probably don't do these in my head but it's late yeah hey, look at that 3,000 huh. and we went from guessing to testing so 3,000 so we're 3,000 our next value I gotta hold it out cuz cuz I'm 40 now uh, 28 I'm guessing 28 so that should be what 5800 so 5.8 kilo ohms on the next level. Let me walk around here Go to the next, Take to the next level pal 5.8 wow Don't you love it when a plan comes together and the next one is 4300 so that's what that's like 10,000 and some change Let's do the math. 0, 0, 8, 9, 10, 11, 1, and 5, and 4, and 1 is 10. So 10.1 kilo, or yeah, 10.1 kilo ohms. 10.1 thousand ohms. Next level. Where are we at? <laughs> Don't you love it when a plan comes together? So there we are, 10.1. So that is all of our delay speeds. Now we have to hit low. And what did we determine low was going to be? Low and slow. That should be our first resistance value, which on this chart says 380. So let's go low. That's going to be the next click up. Next click up. What do we got? Survey says 397. Oh, you see that flicker? What's that? What was that all about? That was funky. Let me go, let's go like this. We're gonna go to graphing. We're gonna go to homage. We should be using the Pico right now because the new Pico has the ability to graph homage, which is awesome. So we're gonna put this on a 10 second capture. Let's change our value here. I don't know if it's gonna display. Yes, it does. Can you guys see it? You probably can't. Uh, I'm going to shut that back down and go back up because we want to make sure there's no funny business there. There we go. It's all the way 
down all the way up or back on low. Don't, you know, never mind the monkey business there in the beginning. We just want to see if this thing's going to go open or do something weird. Connectors there. We just try that one more time. on low and that's pretty steady so maybe just a fluke I'm still pretty happy 397 now in theory if we hold it on mist then we determine that mist by looking at the diagram utilizes the mister hey there mister that should go right through the same deal. So it should stay at 380 when I hold it on mist. Um, I'm not gonna be able to see it, so I'm gonna go back to graphing because I don't wanna take it away from you guys. All right, I'm gonna put on a little longer sweep because I'm gonna be inside the car. About 30 seconds, we're on low. I'm gonna, now mist is when you crank it all the way down and you're just like, hey, I got a little mist on my window and you, you flick it backwards. So right there, it's off, and we're infinite resistance. I'm gonna hold it in the mist position. I'm just gonna keep it there for a few seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. We should have seen it steady across the bottom, and we did, so that's good. So that's mist. And I'll get it so you guys can see it. You probably can't see with that freaking door open, can you? Are you guys, can you see anything? Yeah, I guess you can. Let's go back to our digital meter. I'll go hold it down in mist right now. I believe I have the switch turned off, which we do. I'll hold it in mist. That should be 380 or whatever that resistor value was, 390 something. Is that changing on you? Is it click? I hear it clicking. So that should be 390 whatever it was. Let me look real quick. I couldn't see it, but I'm certain that was good. So. We've done everything, we've checked that. Now the only other thing we have to check on that wire, as we determined, was the worst circuit, the washer. And in theory, the diagram is correct. We'll check this one also. I believe it's gonna be, we should be at zero ohms. Hey, what's up, Oni? That's what electric guys say. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't think so. So we're gonna go here. We're gonna graph it again, because that's the only way I'm gonna be able to see it. And we're gonna change our value down to 40 ohmage. And I'm gonna move our scale up here so I can see what's going on. And I'm gonna go hold it in the worst position, and that should be coming across as zero or darn near close to it. Okay, I got the squirter switch held forward. I'm gonna give it a second. I'm gonna come around and have a little gander. I let go of it, and what was it? Yeah, you see, we we're right at zero, zero ohms, or close to it, whatever the resistance is of the wires and the contact and the switch and the leads and you know other variables. We'll go back to ohms here, and then just so we don't have to wait for it to auto range, we're down to 40 ohms. And can you guys see? Yeah, you can. Let's see. We're gonna hold it in the wash. Wait, what do you got? What's it say? 0.44. Okay, that's in the wash circuit, so that's fine. Hopefully you can see that. And then now, technically, to get high. Getting high. And this is where service data was wrong. Service data says, in low, mist, and high, you should have 380 ohms. Au contraire, Chevrolet. Au contraire. Let's just prove that. Let's stick it in high. I, if the diagram's correct, we shouldn't have anything here. Okay, so I've got it in the high position right now. Let's just change this to auto range so we're not missing anything. And there you go, Chevrolet. You better change your service data because there's going to be a whole lot of text at the Chevrolet garage swapping out switches. Um, show you that we'll look it up again 
to make sure I'm not wrong. Let's just look real quick what we're thinking about it. All right, good, I'm not crazy. Well, not super crazy. Uh, what's interesting here, it says it's a 380 ohm resistor, but they want you to check to make sure it's 390. So they got some discrepancies here. Uh, disconnect wiper motor connector, check. Test resistance from windshield wiper switch supply voltage circuit. So the bolted, the circuit that supplies the switch with voltage, which is our pink wire, which is the one we've been on. To the windshield wiper switch signal one terminal in the wiper motor harness. So switch signal one is a dark blue wire. So that's our, what we've determined is the high circuit. And they say, Operate the windshield wiper washer in the following positions. Miss low and high is the resistance value in the is the resistance near the specified value in the listed switch position. So in they they're saying in missed low and high, hooked to the two wires that we're hooked to, it should be 390 ohms. Well, au contraire. Contraire, Chevrolet. Because if we hook to the voltage supply wire switch voltage the, this is the voltage supply wire to the switch as they stated and wiper switch signal one which is the high circuit we're hooked into this one and this one they're saying we should have 390 ohms in low mist and high but that's impossible you know by the switch design that is incorrect you're wrong Chevrolet you're dead wrong so Anyhow, so let's just see if you're following their fancy flow charts, which always leads you into the path of destruction, changing the ECM, and having a hopeless pair at the end. Uh, so if no, we go to step 10. Step 10 says, test windshield wiper switch supply voltage circuit for open or short to ground. And it just is going to send you on a wild goose chase. Did we find an open short to ground? No. So we go to step 11, test signal one for high resistance did we find a condition no we go to step 12 inspect poor connections we didn't find it go to step 13 replace windshield wiper washer switch is the repair complete no but there's no no right here so what do you do you chuck an ecm at it at that point right <laughs> i don't know if that's the case but let's just test it the right way based on what we know so we're going to go high dark blue to ground which is black so we are in dark blue currently go to ground and in theory when we go to high we should go to in at or around zero ohms is my guess based on what we see and what we know in the diagram to be true and bada bing bada boom 0.44 ohms therefore all said and done beyond a shadow of a doubt we know that our wiper switch is good Therefore, the wiper motor is wonky. What's the other thing we can do? We can just verify 100% that we have good power and ground there. Um, looks like, uh, well, he has the fuse out of right now. This fuse 33, the one that's behind the passenger seat. Um, we can just verify that we had, you know, we can carry, you know, it's 25 amps. So we'll just make sure we can stick a, you know, heavy load on it, five amp load, power ground. Um, and that's it. Other than that, the rest is history. We're done. It's over. Show's over, folks. Thanks for watching. So that's it, folks. We're going to leave it at that. That's it for your 2006 Chevrolet SSR. It's a very common wiper system Chevrolet is used. Like, you know, they use that style where it's a multiplexing, I guess, where you have one wire that sends multiple different resistant values. You know, you'll see these on cruise control switches and wiper switches and steering wheel control, you know, volume controls and stuff. That way there you don't have, you know, you can have five or six buttons but only you know one wire, two wires, you know, whether it's resistance value through ground or it's fed power, like in this case, and then it goes through resistor and you know the different voltage values hit the wiper motor. The wiper says, oh, you know, at 0.8 volts I do low. At point, you know, two volts I do, you know, delay four. You know, that that's where the magic that lives inside the wiper motor, that's where it does its magic. You know, it goes in there and somebody calculates it and that's that. So uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Hopefully some of this made sense to you. Sometimes service data, you know, even factory service data can be wicked confusing. Now it has nothing to do with Mitchell or, or no data or, you know, I didn't fix, you know, they're all the same. They, they put the same stuff. If you go on GM and you pay your 20 bucks and you get your factory data, you're going to have the same stuff and you're going to go through steps. You know, I mean, there's 16 steps on how to, you know, do the wrong sort of testing and lead you down the wrong path. 
and then there's multiple other steps you can go to. Sometimes the easiest thing to do is look at circuit design. Look at the wiring diagram and, and say to yourself, self, how does this work? Uh, you know, what, what, do, what do I expect when I put it in low? What do I expect when I put it in delay? And once you know that, you know, write it down, jot it down. You know, the best you can tell by your diagram, is, especially with the two diagrams, we had resistor values, look in service data, get some values out of there, and then start making your own test plan. I'm going to check these two wires. Here's what I expect to see in low, delay one, two, three, four, five, and on high. And then if that power ground, make the call, flush this toilet. Um, I really hope it made sense to you. I don't know, sometimes it, towards the end of the day, where are we going? Almost 7 o'clock, been late. Uh, need to roll out of here. Gonna throw the cow on this. He's gonna drive it like it is. He said, Don't even bother put the wiper arms and crap on it till we get the new motor. So, when we get that, I'll put it in and I'll at least do a little follow up video to show you that uh, we're not wrong, that our theory was good and sound and true. So, why don't you be true to me and head on down to that comment box? Leave a question, comment, criticism, concern while you're down there. Subscribe, ring the bell, find us on our socials, Insta, Facebook signs they use for that and uh, just remember viewers if I can do it you can do it thanks for watching